Amen and amen. Okay. It's okay. Let's let's hear the word of God today. There's something the Lord was showing me as we are praying. So open your heart so that the Lord will speak to you. The reason is whenever you're in his presence and you opportune that I'm the one ministering, open your heart. Because you know, it's not every day you will see me minister to you. So whenever you have the opportunity, open your heart so that the Lord will use me to minister to you. The same way I'm opening my heart so that the Lord will equally use you to bless me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh. And I'm not going to say amen for this one. Okay, let's hear to this word. You know, something happened here last week when I was ministering. I ministered on something. And when I demanded for questions, questions was coming from a different thing. And those things, the questions were coming from, were just something I used as a, a reference. Amen? And this morning, I, 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 I discovered that I think I need to speak on that topic so that we understand. Now, there are principles for a man or a woman to make heaven. And since there are principles, because of that purpose, we must have to understand things that we must have to do to make heaven. Last week, somebody asked me a question. He said to me, that day, if, I don't know who asked that question. He said, if I am not baptized, does it mean I won't make heaven? I think somebody asked that question last week. <laughs> okay. We're going to look into those things today. And somebody, one of our followers in our channel, Action God TV, from abroad, I can't remember the country, sent on our WhatsApp prayer line, and he said to me, um, he said to me that there's some Sundays ago I was preaching and I made a comment and I said there are men of God that are not children, child of God. I made such comment. <laughs> so they wanted me to clarify it. So I'm going to explain that somebody, you know what people, what people use this to uh, tag people, men of God, is when they see somebody who is operating a gift. Is that correct? Hello? You see, I'm starting to teach you a different thing. That's not what I came to preach. Now, hear this. When you're operating in a gift, gift of God, you come and prophesy. You, you will come and lay hands on somebody and the person is healed. That is gift. Hello? And gift is different from calling. Are you aware? Every one of you here have one gift or the other. Now, because of the gifts, anybody they see who operates gifts, he will lay hands and somebody will be healed. Automatically, they would tag him a man of God. And that does not qualify him as a child of God. But this morning, I want us to look into what I titled The Correct Water Baptism. If I said the correct water baptism, that means there is fake water baptism. So we want to look into what I call the correct water baptism. And because of that question somebody asked last Sunday, saying, so does it mean if somebody is not baptized, the person will not go to heaven? Ah, we are going to answer it this morning. So this morning we are looking into baptism. And baptism is more than one, is that correct? There is water baptism and there is what? Holy Ghost baptism. Water baptism is mansion baptism, okay? So, there is water baptism and there is Holy Ghost baptism. But this morning, we are looking into water baptism. So, correct water baptism. But first of all, before I proceed, let's, let's look at what is, what is baptism. What is baptism? Take me to Romans chapter 6 from verse 1 to 4. What is baptism? Baptism is what I call dead to sin, alive to God. Dead to sin, comma, alive to God. Why did I say dead to sin and alive to God? Is that what baptism represents is the death and resurrection of who? Christ. And when you are being buried and resurrected again, it means that that means it's a remission of what? Remission of what? Of sin. 
Somebody was asking if the baptism they pour water on head, if that baptism was correct. I'm going to answer that as we are proceeding on this teaching this morning. And I'm going to be very brief. Open your heart. Be ready to ask questions at the end of it. Prepare your questions as a Bible student. The reason why you are here in the presence of God is to understand the way and how you can run the race and get to God. And at the end of the day, I pray that the Lord shall give you the grace and the Holy Ghost to understand the teaching to the glory of God. Amen. Let me hear you. Romans 6 from verse 1 to 4. <laughs> what shall we say then? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Shall that we grace, continue in sin? That grace may abound. That grace may abound. God forbid. God forbid. How shall we? How shall we? That are dead to sin. Are dead to sin. How shall we? That are dead to sin. Live any longer daring. Live any longer. How shall we? That are so sinful. Live any longer. Know ye not. Uh -huh. Know ye not. That so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ. That so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ. Were baptized into his death. Were baptized into his death. Don't you know that you that is baptized is baptized into the death. Which means when you are being carried and buried, you were baptized into his death and resurrected as he resurrected. Yes. Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism. By baptism, you are buried with Christ. Which means that the correct baptism means you must be buried. Underline this. You must be buried. Not pouring water on the head. Hello? Now, when you are being buried, that means the water baptism Jesus spoke to us was for us to be buried and resurrected again with him. That is why baptism stands for remission. Remission of what? Saying that you come back alive. Yes. By baptism into his death. By baptism into his death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead. That the same way he was raised up from the dead. By the glory of the Father. By the glory of his Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. So that we all should walk in newness of what? Wow. And for you to be walking in newness of life, that means you will be remitted. The sin have to go back and you will come out of life again. That is why if the water baptism that you did was to pour ahead, brother, go back. Sister, go back. Let them bury you and bring you back what? Life. I'm going to show you the scripture why they talk about the sin that you came with. Forget about that. If you born a child today and Jesus comes today, that child will make heaven. You cannot confess what you don't know. You cannot remit what you have not noticed that is happening to you. You cannot be a child and you kneel down and say, God, forgive me because I'm a fornicator. And when you follow all the things the disciples did, the Bible made it so clear that before you be baptized, they will speak to you, then they will say, if you believe. So that means if you don't believe. So how can a child believe, brother? The genuine baptism is the baptism you must be buried and come alive. And Jesus gave us an example. Take me to Matthew chapter 3. 13 to 17, Jesus showed us that even him as God showed an example and he was baptized. And John said, I'm, I'm afraid of to baptize. He said, no, no, suffer it to be so now, brother. Do it now. But, you know, yes, let me hear you. That's for the purpose. Matthew 3 verse 13 to 17. Uh -huh. Then come Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John uh -huh. to be baptized of him. Uh -huh. But John forbade him, saying, John said, no, 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 I got what you to talk. I have need to be baptized of thee. Uh -huh. And comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. Suffer it to be so now. Do it now. So I have a reason why I want you to do this. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Uh -huh. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, uh -huh. went up straight away mm. out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened. The heavens were opened. That is why when you are baptized, and I've gone through the remission of sin, there will be an evidence. 
In fact, because of this story, I noticed that baptism too is part of deliverance. Hello? Baptism too is part of what? Deliverance. I have seen men and women who are believing God for one miracle or the other, being baptized and they come out and the thing came to pass. Nobody pray for them. Because what is connected to baptism is the power of resurrection and death of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. We opened up unto him uh -huh. and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove. He saw the spirit of God descending, identifying him. That's why when you're being baptized, there, should, there is every possibility that you will receive the baptism of what? Holy Ghost. Which identifies that God is truly now with you. And lighting upon him. Uh -huh. And lo, a voice from heaven saying. A voice from heaven saying. This is my beloved son. Uh -huh. In whom I okay. well pleased. Okay, let's go to another scripture. I want to go to where the controversy of baptism started from. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Great Commission. The Great Commission. That Jesus commissioned his disciples to go and baptize. Which has brought controversy in the Christendom. That this church is doing a different thing. Another church is doing a different thing. Another one is doing a different thing. Another one is doing a different thing. And that is the scripture we want to go through now. But I pray that Holy Ghost open your eyes to understand the true revelation of what Jesus spoke here. And you know, in that scripture... That was when Jesus resurrected. Take me to Matthew 28. Um, you're going to read it sir, from, so we're going to be on the speed lane. But when you go home, you can read it from verse 1. But read it from verse 16 to 20. Where Jesus commissioned his disciples. And the disciples his commission were the remaining what? 11. You know, Judas was gone. Is that correct? So that was the first commandment. And this is why baptism is important. Because when he gave them that command, he said to them that you should go to all nations. That's what that scripture says. Meaning that every child of God needs to be what? Baptized. Amen? Okay, take me to that scripture, sir. Matthew 28 from verse 16. Yes. Then the 11 disciples went away You will stop at 20. You will stop at 20. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, Yes. Into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Where Jesus asked them to wait. And when they saw him. And when they saw him. They worshipped him. They worshipped him. But some doubted. Some were doubting because you know that was the day. That was uh, after Jesus has resurrected. And some of the disciples have not seen him. I don't even talking here. Some of the disciples have not seen who? Jesus. So. Some were doubting because that was after he has crucified, buried, and resurrected again. So some have not seen him. So when they saw him, they were like, <laughs> he just said, this man, why I see my eye? When they, he died on the cross, and are you sure? So they were doubting, and we don't blame them for doubting too. Because even you as a normal woman being a flesh, you are, if you see somebody die, and now die here, and you get to the gate and see the person. My brother, you will take wrong. No, me so. Not so, no. Not so. So go ahead, sir. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, And Jesus spoke unto the disciples and saying, All powers is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Every power put in heaven and on earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. I want you to hold your pen because here is the where the teaching started and that is where the controversy started. He said, Go ye therefore unto what? And teach all nations. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father uh -huh. and of the Son uh -huh. and of the Holy Ghost. Now this is where the controversy started. I want you to underline this. <coughs> and Jesus came to and spoke unto them saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of who? The Father. Eh? The Father. And who? And of the Son. And who? And of the Holy Ghost. Now, who were Jesus talking to? The disciples. The disciples. Now, after he spoke to them, they actually went and did what he said, right? Because people were baptized in the Bible. Is that correct? Now, I want you to underline the word name. You know, last Sunday, we spoke about name here. Is that correct? We spoke about what? The name of who? We needed to understand who is him. Who is that man? 
A lot of people see him as God. A lot of people see him as son of God. A lot of people see him. So there are different things how people see him. So, but now, he said, go and baptize them in the name of the Father. That means the Father has a name. This is where the controversy is in the church. That means the Son has a name. That means the Holy Ghost has a name. Now, let, let's continue. Proceed. I will explain it as we follow it. Teaching them to observe all things. Teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I have commanded you. Uh -huh. And lo, I am with you always. Lo, I am with you always. Take me, before I proceed, take me to Mark, Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter, Mark 16. chapter 16. Yes. yes. Take it from verse 14. From verse 14. Yes, yes, from verse 14. You stop it at uh, 18. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as he sat at meat. After that, Jesus appeared unto the eleven. That's after he resurrected. And upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of hearts. Because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world. He said unto them again, Go ye unto the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. And preach the gospel unto every creature. He that believed and is baptized shall be saved. Now understand and underline this word. He that does what? He that does what? So that means you must not be a baby before you're born. Uh, you, you must be a mature person. He that believes. A baby cannot believe. A baby doesn't even understand what you're talking about. Is that correct? So it must be he that does what? He that does what? Believe. So you must be somebody who understands that what you're doing is sinful. Before you can be baptized. This is Jesus talking here, not the apostles. Are you done? But he that believeth not shall be damned. Now I want you to underline that one. He that believes should be what? But whoever that does not believe shall do what? What, does, what is the meaning of damn? Condemn. Shall be what? Condemn. He that believes shall be baptized. Is that correct? Is that correct, church? But whoever that is, does, does not believe shall do what? Condemn. Now, when you want to talk about God saving you, when you want to talk about God saving you, he said, he that believes, but he who does not believe, shall be condemned. That means, if you have grown to understand what is good and evil, and you believe in Jesus, and you have not been baptized, and you die, there is every tendency that you will not make heaven. I want you to prepare your questions. There is every tendency that you will not do what? Make heaven. I want you to take that scripture again. It was Jesus talking. And he and he that believed and is baptized shall be saved. He that believed in Jesus and is baptized shall be what? Saved. But he, but he that believeth not shall be damned. He that believeth not will be condemned. If you believe, you will be baptized and you shall be what? But if you do not believe, you will be what? You will go to hell. You will be condemned. Somebody was asking me one time, he said, it's not possible that because of baptism somebody will go to hell. I laugh. I said, see, things of heaven goes with principle. Now, if you believe, you'll be baptized and you shall be saved. If you don't believe, you'll be condemned. Will you be saved? When you are condemned, will you be saved? So, things of heaven goes with principle, not sentiment. The principle is, you have to receive your Lord Jesus Christ as your God and personal Savior. You shall be a born again. Then when they preach Jesus to you, you believe. The next step as a child of God is for you to be taken so that the remission of sin will take place. This is Jesus speaking, not the disciples. Are you done with that scripture? And this sign shall follow them that believe. And this sign shall follow them that does what? Believe. Those that believe, believe, oh, believe, brother. <laughs> In my name shall they cast out devils. Uh -huh. 
they shall speak with new tongues. Uh -huh. They shall take up serpents. Yes. And if they drink any deadly thing, it uh -huh. shall not hurt them. Uh -huh. They shall lay hands on the sick. Yes, sir. And they shall recover. Amen. Amen. That is that for is those who does what? Who believe. Now, take me to Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. You are going to open it one side there. You are going to reopen Matthew 28. Colossians chapter 2 from verse 8 to 12. Colossians 2 from verse 8 to 12. Yes. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Let no pastor, let no pastor deceive you through philosophy. Tell you it's not possible that God will do this. Now lie, now lie. It's not biblical. If any pastor needs to tell you the truth, let them teach you the true revelation of who Jesus Christ is. Let no pastor deceive you. With philosophy and vain deceit. With vain deceit. With the sweet mouth that this is what is God wants. This, this and that. This, this and that. After the tradition of men. And that is the tradition of men, brother. After the rudiment of the world. After the rudiment of the world. And not and after not Christ. of Christ. God. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. This is my emphasis. Verse 9. Verse 9. He said, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of godly head. Who is that? Christ. Who is that? Christ. In who? In Christ dwelleth what? All the fullness of the Godhead. The fullness of Godhead. Who will tell me what is Godhead? The fullness of Godhead. What are the Godhead? Who can tell me? Is anybody here? Who can explain that? Huh? Yes, let me hear you. Hallelujah, man. To my own phenomena, it's like God, Godhead is the first son that the apparent head to the throne. Take that scripture again. For in verse 8. Uh -huh. Verse 9. Okay, verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness. That is, in Christ dwelleth uh -huh. all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In him dwelleth the Godhead fullness. That means it's not one. In him dwelleth the Godly. Now, let me tell you what is Godhead. Godhead means God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In one person dwelleth the Godhead. That is why in the book of John, Jesus said, I shall send you a comforter in my... What is his name? Jesus Christ. And the comforter is the what? Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Is that correct? So that means Holy Ghost came in the name of who? Jesus Christ. When Jesus was here, he answered what? Jesus. And he was seen as a what? As a son. Every time he would say, my father in heaven, my father in heaven. Philip woke up one day and said to him, what did he say? He said, every time you say, my father, my father, who is this your father? And what did Jesus say to him? Eh? He said, I've been too long that you don't know me. If you have seen me, so it is in the body of that one person dwelleth the father, the son, and the what? Go back to Matthew 28 now. Exactly that place he said, baptize in the name. Remember that that instruction was given to who? The disciples. After Jesus resurrected from the dead. Is that correct? And he was talking to the remaining 11 disciples. Because Judas was already gone. So the remaining 11 that Jesus spoke to, he said now, what did he say? Go ye therefore and Go ye teach therefore, all nations. Teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. And of the Holy Ghost. Now I want you to understand this. And Colossians where we read now said that all those godly heads dwelleth in one person, which is what? Christ. In John, Jesus said to them, I came in my father's name. Is that correct? When Philip asked him, who is this father? He said, have I been too long and you don't know me? If you have seen me, you have seen the father. Then as a son, he was equally answering what? Christ. When he wanted to ascend, in the same John, he said, I came, uh, uh, no, I will leave you with a comforter, 
in my that means these three people are one not three they have never been God. they have never been three God they are what and if they are one there is every tendency that they have one name have you even thought about it why is it that in Philippians chapter 2 I think 9 to 10 that the Bible said at the mention of the name every name every name where in heaven then if that name could be mentioned and all the knees in heaven will bow I'm suspecting three of you how can the name of a son be mentioned every name every name and the bible said that his father has given him a name above every so that is a person that owns that name Acts of Apostles chapter 4 verse 12 says there is no other name under heaven that we should be saved apart from that name. Uh -uh. So there is something about the name. Now the disciples before they baptized people in the scripture you know it was the disciples that Jesus spoke to. Is that correct? Now they now decided to fulfill what Jesus told them. But the Bible made us understand that before they baptize you they will teach you first of all the name. They will teach you about the name Jesus. Then before they will baptize you. Then when the disciples discover that, that this Godhead dwelleth in one person which is Christ. They now saw the revelation that this man is one. But he operated in three offices. As I'm talking to you now I am your prophet. When I get home my wife will see me as his husband. When I enter my children's room, my children will see me as their father. So, my name has not changed. My name is Prophet Nonso. So, Prophet Nonso is a pastor, a husband, and a father. Is that correct? God is one. There has never been three God. The only one he did was that he operated in three offices. And that was why even Satan was confused. When he saw Jesus after 40 days, he thought he was talking to a son. He never knew he was talking to his God. Satan was so confused. He didn't understand the mystery. And that's why the mystery will only remain with those who knows and understands it. And after Jesus has given that instruction, the disciples said, okay, is that what happens here? Now they now decided to start baptizing people. Are there baptisms in the Bible? Did the disciples obey the instruction Jesus gave them after he resurrected? Yes. Let's see what the apostles did in the Acts of Apostles. Take me first. Let's go to Acts of Apostles chapter 2, 35 to 41. Acts chapter 2 from verse 35. Yes, sir, to 41. Until I make thy foot, thy foes, thy footstool. Uh -huh. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know as shortly. That God had made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, they began to, first of all, who was teaching this? I think Peter, right? Peter, first of all, began to teach them about who? Jesus Christ. And said, you should know that God has made this Jesus, both Lord and what? So, he is in charge. Yes. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. The Bible said when they heard Peter speak on this, their heart was touched. And said unto Peter, and they said unto Peter, and the rest of the apostles, and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, men and brethren, what shall we do? They now began to ask, I beg, now what thing we supposed to do as we don't hear this? Then Peter said unto them, Peter answered them and said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Wait, I, I want you to understand something. Peter said to them, he said, repent and be what? Baptized. Peter said unto them, repent and be what? Baptized. In the name of who? Jesus Christ. Is that what is there? Peter, who was friend to Jesus, didn't go back to Matthew 28, 19. Is it 19 or 16? Eh? That says, Jesus said to Peter and his colleague, Go ye to all nations. Do what? 
In the name of what? And what? And what? In Acts of Apostles, when Peter started the work, did he repeat in the name of the Father? Did he repeat in the name of the Son? Did he repeat in the name of the Holy Ghost? And before he baptized those people, he spoke to them about who? Jesus Christ. Let them understand who he is. This man is in charge. At the mention of his name, every knee will bow. This, this, and that. You see, they now caught the true revelation that this particular name is the name both of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That if God is one, he only operated in three offices. There is no three God anywhere. We have only one almighty God. And he has established only a name that we shall be used with, with in, under the oppressions and that name is what? And when the disciples understood what Jesus, you know Jesus spoke so much in parable. When they understood what Jesus was speaking, Peter started baptizing people and when he baptized people, he doesn't take the long journey and he say in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, Peter came and baptized in one name. That is when you mention every name shall. And Peter baptized in the name of who? If I let me open up to you. If you were baptized and it was repeated in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and Jesus was not mentioned, that baptism is incomplete. It's not correct. The true baptism and correct baptism is the baptism that the name that was approved must be mentioned. From Genesis to Revelation, there is no place in the Bible. The name Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit were repeated from Genesis to Revelation. There is no place in the Bible that name was used for baptism. So where did churches get it to use it to baptize people? In the name of the uh, is Father a name? Father is not a name. In the name of the Son, is Son a name? There is a name. There is a name. So Jesus made it clear. Go here and baptize all nations in the name, in the name of the Father. The Father has a name. In the name of the Son, the Son has a name. In the name of the Holy Ghost. Jesus even made it clear. He said, I will leave you a comforter in my name. Which is the Holy Ghost. So the, the thing was clear. The Holy Ghost came in the name of Jesus. Jesus as a son came in the name of Jesus. When the confusion came, anytime he wants to talk, he will say, Father, Father, Father. One disciple took courage, which was uh, Philip. He said, oh God, every time you they say, Father, Father, I beg, show us the Father. Don't be me and you there here. How come you don't know who the Father is? He said, show us. Every time you they say, Father, Father. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. The Father is in me, and I am in my Father. Colossians chapter 2. The godly head dwelleth in Christ. So the three offices dwelleth in one man. Jesus is the corporate headquarters of God. Sir, so, let, let's, let's see more. With evidence, let, let's go to Acts of Apostles chapter 10. Let's see what more Peter did there. When the Holy Ghost came upon the Gentiles. Acts chapter 10. Yes, Acts chapter 10. Take me from verse 44 and 48. Verse 44. Yes, to 48. Why Peter yet spoke these words? As Peter was talking about Jesus and the good things of the Lord, the Holy Ghost fell on them. The Holy Ghost came upon them which heard the word. Those that was hearing about things that concerning Jesus and the good news of God, the Bible said the Holy Ghost did what? The Holy Ghost did what? Came on them. See, these particular people now, I think there was somebody that asked me a question. Um, if, was it Sunday? There's somebody that said something like, if Holy Ghost can come on. Because I made a comment that when you're being baptized, after the baptism, there is every expectation that you shall receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then somebody asked the question, does it mean that if you have not been baptized, you won't receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Then I replied and said, even a sinner can operate the gift of God. That is why the Bible said that the gift cometh without 
repentance. Is that correct? So, but here, there were people who, when Peter was talking about it, Jesus, as I'm talking about him now, explaining who he is to you, he said they believed on the good news, and yes, the Spirit of God fell upon them. Yes. 45. Uh-huh. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. They were astonished. As many as came with Peter, uh-huh. because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now the, the, the gift of the Holy Ghost was poured on the Gentiles. Yes. For they heard them speak with tongues. They began to speak with tongues. And magnify God. Uh-huh. Then answered Peter. Uh-huh. Then Peter answered to them. Can any man forbid water? Can any man forbid water? That this should not be baptized. That this should not be baptized. Which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. We who has received the Holy Ghost. So there are people too. Who are using their gift to prophesy. And do everything. Who claim that they have received the Holy Ghost. And who has not baptized. Because they believe that one is not necessary. The Bible where we read. Made it so clear in the book of Mark. If you, are, if you believe and be baptized. You shall be saved. If you do not believe, you shall be contained. So, that is why there are people who will preach very well and prophesy and still go to hell. You cannot escape the true principle of making heaven. Yes, sir. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then Peter commanded them, that's why the Holy Ghost you claim say it inside you. You must be baptized in the name of who? In the name of who? Jesus Christ. That is the name. The name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Car, you must be baptized. Take me to Acts of Apostles. You know why we are in Acts of Apostles? Acts of Apostles means the works of the apostles. And remember that it was the apostles that Jesus gave that instruction. Acts of Apostles chapter 19, verse 1 to 7. Acts 19 from verse 1. Yes, to and seven. it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, and it came to pass while Apollos was at Corinth, this is Paul asking the disciples. Now, here, Paul, uh, having passed, hold, hold on, hold on. Here is where you'll be shocked that there are disciples who have not been baptized and they can be disciples. Now, let me use the word workers. There are workers in different churches today that are workers, but they have not been baptized. Disciples, which means followers of Christ. Is that correct? So they were followers of Christ. Still, they were not what? Baptized. And it was so important. And, and Paul said, no, 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 no. You must. Is it Paul or Peter? Go ahead. Paul. And Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. As Paul was passing through the upper coast and came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples. He saw some disciples. He said unto them. He said unto them. Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him. Uh-huh. We have not so, heard, so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. And he said unto them, He said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? Unto what, what? What then were ye baptized? And unto what then were you baptized? And he said unto John's baptism. He said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. John baptized with the baptism of repentance. Saying unto correct. the people, uh-huh. That ye should believe on him which should come after him. When Paul, uh, John were baptizing, he kept telling people, to believe because there is somebody who is coming after him and that person is who? Right. Jesus Christ, yes. That is on Christ Jesus. Uh-huh. When they heard this, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. What name? They were baptized what? In the name of the on, Lord Jesus. On the line in which name were they baptized? They were baptized in the name of our Lord. They were baptized, uh, they were workers, so workers that will carry microphone and go to the streets and make noise. But they were not baptized. Now, now they were baptized before. But they were baptized when Jesus has not come. Amen. But when Jesus came, they needed to be baptized in that name. Somebody say in that name. In that name. In that name. Jesus Christ. And they were baptized. And after they were baptized, what happened? And when Paul had laid his hands upon them. When Paul laid hands upon them. The Holy Ghost came on them. The Holy Ghost came on them. And they spake with new tongues and prophesied. And they spake. And take me to Acts of Apostles chapter 8 verse 26. Acts of Apostles chapter 8 verse 26. Acts 8 26. Uh-huh. And the angel of the Lord spoke unto Philip. An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. 
saying, Arise. He said, My friend, get up. And go towards the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem to Gaza, uh -huh. which is desert. Uh -huh. And he arose and went. Uh -huh. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, uh -huh. and Enoch of great authority under Candens Queen. Now, hear this. This particular person, Philip met, is a man of what? Authority. A powerful man. Just like governor's president is, is a power. Somebody who is in charge. He said, the Bible says is uh, Ethiopian Enoch. Somebody who is, he, he, he goes with his chariot, with his securities, a great man. But he heard about baptism. He said, hey, you know, Bible is complete. When you look at the Bible, it's complete. It gives you emphasis from every corner of, earth, of the world. Yes, go ahead. Who had the charge of all our treasures uh -huh. and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Yes. Was returning and sitting in his chariot, uh -huh. read Isaiah the prophet. Mm -hmm. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Philip, uh, the spirit said, Philip, my friend, go, go, go near, go near. You have a work to do. It's an assignment. And Philip ran thither to uh -huh. him uh -huh. and heard him read the prophet Isaiah uh -huh. and said, Understand it thou what thou readest and he said how can I except some man should guide me and he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him yes, yes. the place in the scripture which he read was this he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb like a lamb dumb before his sharer uh -huh. so opened he not his mouth mm -hmm. and his humiliation his judgment was taken away mm -hmm. And who shall declare his generation? Uh -huh. For his life is taken from the earth. And the Enoch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh this prophet this? Uh -huh. Of himself or of some other man? Understand this now. When the Enoch asked Philip this question, now Philip began to raise an issue to teach him about who? Jesus Christ. Go, go ahead. Then Philip opened his mouth and began to began the same scripture uh -huh. and preached unto him, Jesus. He preached unto him who? Jesus. So all the disciples, before they baptize you, they will always teach you and preach who? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. And as they went on their way, uh -huh. they came unto a certain water. They go to where there is a water somewhere. And the Enoch said, Enoch said, see here is water. See water here. What does hinder me to be baptized? What will hinder me now in these things you have taught me? What will I beg? You know, there's one thing about, you know, if you go to so many churches, they put what is called baptism class. Hello? Then you go to that baptism class for six months, eight months, one year. But if you go through the scripture, the principle of baptism is. When I see you, even if I see you on the road, you're going. I began to talk about Christ to you, and you believe. The next principle is to what? But if I give you six months, the repentance for unfaith. Hi, that's correct now. The repentance for do what? For unwaka. So when he had, he was passing. He said, "Philip, I beg. This is water. Can I? Can I? I beg. Can I?" Let me hear you. And Philip said, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, If thou believest with all thy heart, Thou mayest. Thou mayest. If thou believest. If thou. So when you, are, when you believe, the next thing is to take you to water baptism. And he said, And he said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. He commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both can, into can, the water. He just like when a governor, a president is on is a, is in an entourage, and you now tell him about Jesus. He said, seriously. And you people were driving towards Sulere Lake as you are getting to a closer river. He said, I beg. Now what up with this? As I don't hear this thing, come and baptize me now. And he gave all the chariot. The chariot means the entourage. All of them to do what? Stop. He came down, and what did he do? And both of them went into the water. They went into the water. Both Philip and the Enoch, uh -huh. and he baptized him. And they baptized him. Are you done with seven? Thirty-eight. Huh? Okay, stop there. 
And they do what? They baptize him. That's Acts of Apostle 8, sorry, 26 to 38. Are you on 38 now? 39, okay. And they do what? They baptize him. And after they baptized him, what happened? And when they were come up out of the water, uh -huh. the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, uh -huh. that the Enoch saw him no more. Okay. And he went on his way rejoicing. Even a rich man hears and be baptized. The poor hears and be baptized. The disciples, disciples who are already walking in the side, had that, wow, there was a mistake somewhere. They were what? Baptized. Is that correct? Then how about you? You know the problem is that so many people believe they know Bible and they know nothing. They know nothing. Look at what we read in, in Mark. Let, let me read that Mark again. Mark 16, 14 to 18. Read that Mark again. Let, get, let it get into your head. Mark, Mark 16. Yes, yes 14, 14 and 18. 14 and 18. Let this thing get into your head. What Jesus told his disciples when he resurrected. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as uh -huh. they sat at meat. He appeared unto the eleven. Uh -huh. And upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. Uh -huh. Because they believed not them which had seen him after he, he was risen. He spoke to them on the hardness of the heart. That's the problem a lot of us is having. Hardness. No, my church. You know, the church I was born into. You will perish there. Let me tell you. The race of the kingdom is a personal race. Somebody because that came from the eastern part of this nation, you know that there is two or three churches that is trending. If your parents is not from this one, they must be from this one, they must be from this one. But when I grew up and saw that there was some kind of lack of revelation in some, I said, no, I need to go and do the right thing. I baptized twice. After all, you saw people who baptized twice in the Bible. And he said to them, who baptized? He said, no, John. He said, no, come, come, come. Come and be baptized. When I saw that the baptism before, that they didn't mention the name of that person that died and did what? Resurrected. I said, no, 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 there's a problem. Because Romans chapter 6, 1 to 4, made it clear that what baptism represents is burial and did what? Resurrection. That you'll be buried unto the death and resurrected again. So I said I need to be. And when I discover that there is a, an instruction of spiritual principle which says that his name must be mentioned, I said, no, they don't mention the name. That day they say father. And I realized that father no be named. Son, son no be named. I said, yeah. I went back. I said, rebaptize me and mention the name. Rebaptize me and mention the name. I need to I need to make this happen. This one is not my home. I'm just a passing by. Him one more time. I'm just a I let up. Oh, yes. So, so we have beyond the moon. Him one one zero. Mountain of grace and glory. Him. Yes, Lord. From heaven's open door. Oh, yeah. I like a feel a Oh, yeah. In this world. In this world. Yes, Lord, I, I have no friend like you. Thank you, Lord. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels may come me, yes, sir, from heaven's open door. Aha, I can feel a hole in this world that we must do. I have a loving mother, just of in glory land. Yes, sir. And I don't spare to stop until I shake her hand. She's waiting there for me in heaven's open door. And I can't feel a hole in this world. Lord, oh, oh yes, you thank you, Lord. I have no friend like you. Thank you, Lord. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? Yes, sir.
Continue this scripture as I round up here. In the same Mark 16, for you to know how important it is for you to be baptized. Mark 16, I think take it from verse 15 now. And he said unto them, and Jesus said unto them, Go ye he said to the disciples, go you to, into the world uh -huh. and preach the gospel, and to, preach every the gospel creature. to every creature. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved. He who believe uh, and is baptized shall be what? Shall be saved. Then who does not believe and is not baptized? But he that believeth not, he who does not believe uh -huh. shall be damned, shall be condemned. So that means if you believe and be baptized, you shall be saved. If you do not believe, you will be condemned. And if you're condemned, that means you have gone to hell. Is that correct? So now the question is Does not being baptized make me to go to hell? Before you go, take down this scripture. When you go, you read this one too. Acts of Apostles 18, 7 to 8. Equally read John 14, 6 to 14. It shall help you more. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now that means baptism is a principle you must uphold. And if you've been baptized and the name were not mentioned during your baptism, brother, go and rebaptize. It's incomplete. Now my question is, who has come short of the true principle of baptism in this church? Or that is hearing the sound of my voice? I want you to ask me any question concerning baptism from things you've been taught from somewhere, from so many places. I, I need to hear you now. Yes, there are many, there are many. Where is this people now? Stand up. Okay, give our brother first. Then you give our sister the back. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah, amen. Amen. It's just a short word. But according to my it's just own, what? No, according to my own personal life. Yes. When, when I was baptized in the, uh, the other way, sprinkling. Sprinkling. Yes. Yes. And yes. then came into a church. Mm -hmm. So I was baptized by immersion. Yes. But you say the word here that if just like I'm an example, that if uh, maybe I was not baptized by the name Jesus, mm -hmm. which means it is a name was not mentioned. That name, but, but I was baptized in the name of the Father, mm -hmm. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's all. Which means, because that name, Jesus, it's is name. Don't be annoyed. I have a little, just want to insert a uh, question there. Okay. Because in the creation of the world, I discover where the Father is saying, let's make, make man, man in our own. We made this reference last Sunday, correct? It is plural. That means, and it is plural, and you said, there is nothing like three gods. Um, they used to say there's three God, a one God, which means um, for where I, I'm confused there is whom my the Father talking to. Now, as he said, let's make my to our own. Now, do you know that Jesus? Do you know that Jesus that came to reality was just a spoken word? Yes. John chapter one is that correct? Yes. And the word was God, and the word became flesh. Eh? was just a spoken word and he became a son. This thing you're asking me is just like where somebody asked me the other day, how can God be here and be somewhere else? Because I, I told them that Jesus was God. They were like, what are you talking about? And I asked them a question. And I asked them a question. I said, as we are here now worshiping God, is God not here? He redeemed help with us. He thinks that God not answer prayer there. You know, you're the church. This is God on the answer prayer. In one church, even near our street, God might be there too. Is that correct? Is it not the same God? Now that is the manifestation of one God and he's everywhere. Now hear this. When God said, let us make man, you don't even need so much consultation to understand 
that every assignment of the fulfillment of creation, that there were angels that walked with God. Are you hearing me? Now, if you look at the scripture very well, even at the time of the prophecy of Noah, when God said that corruption was everywhere, when God wanted to give a sign, he sent what? Eh? And that angel will appear like what? Eh? A what? A dove. Like. Let me use the word a bear. Are you hearing me? Now, when God said, let us make man. Now the question is this. God has always from the beginning of the world be God without anybody creating him. But he created everything that has always dwelt with him. And when God said, let us make man, he began to give an assignment. If you understand the manifestation of how Jesus Christ came by just a spoken word, then you don't need any revelation anywhere to explain to you that God made instruments of angels around him for the fulfillment of the assignment he wants to do on earth. Are you hearing me? Now, the scripture was written and a voice was heard, let us make man. Who are those people? Now, that is the mystery behind everyone that has not gotten the true mystery of God, which says that the mystery remains to those with those who are of his. And that mystery is that God has his instrument, his angels, his workers that he, God, has already made that he gives assignment. And that's why he gave Jesus Christ assignment. Remember, he is that the same God. But when he came, John chapter 1 verse 14, he said Jesus was glorified as a son. Not called as a son. Was glorified, was seen as what? As a son. So on earth, everybody sees him as who? Son, son. But there is somebody who is. When he wanted to disappear, he said, okay, I will send you a Holy Ghost in my, in my what? And Holy Ghost came. Do you see the Holy Ghost? Did they see him? But you notice that when we are singing, something comes to you. It is what? And the Spirit of God is who? Is God. Is that correct? Is the Spirit of God God? That means God dwells in you. Through the what? Holy Spirit. But remember, it is that the same what? God. Is that correct? So automatically, it was God in existence because he is God and had the ability to be here. And being East, and being America, and being South Africa, all together at the same time, and that is why He is God. So let us make man. Let us who are those people, and one person somewhere will use it as as a connecting point. That means there is Son. That means there is Holy Ghost. That means there is this. Let me tell you. Holy Ghost, when Jesus came, it was when he ascended that he brought the Holy Ghost. Have you ever imagined why the Bible said Jesus was speaking to 5,000 people? How can 5,000 people hear Jesus without a microphone? Even as you people are here, if I'm talking without a microphone, I won't talk more than one hour. Is that correct? Then you will understand there is a mystery. Imagine 5,000 people in the auditorium and he began to talk repent and everybody hears him that means he was not only one person that day tell them I said so that means he was talking and he was close to somebody there and somebody was hearing him they brought five loaves of bread he makes it to serve the whole thousands of people and five loaves of bread the word naturally that's why some people called him magicians they say that man a magician. So that is who he is. That is why he is God. So when I see pastors who argue without true revelation, saying, but he said, let us make man. That means Jesus. Am I making sense to you at all? Yes, they are making sense. But I still have a, uh, another okay. place. Where go ahead, go ahead. Where they had a, just like, uh, whether it's a story or according to eschatology. Okay. That, uh, and that's that why the place we read now, said we should not listen to the philosophy of men. Go ahead. That they came into a meeting where they want to send a man. That is that the, the preparation of the coming of Jesus or Christ. 
And at the time they say, Who will I send? That is the father was asking. And Jesus said, Send me. And Jesus and said, Send me. Son? Say, Send me. If I don't think it should be the one that will still be asking, Who will I send? And he will ask himself, Send me. Okay. Your, your, what did you call it? Did you call it tautology? Scatology. Scatology. <laughs> your scatology is good and can scatter a baby Christian brain. Is that correct? Hello, church. His scatology is what? And he can scatter what? Open John chapter 1 for me. The beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. And he was all things made. And without him was nothing made that was made. Uh, who was that? No, no, no. Who was that? Open that scripture. Open that scripture. Open, open, open. Open it, open it, open it. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Read that scripture. Say in the beginning. Uh-huh was the word. Uh-huh. And the word was with the God. The word was with God. And the word was God. Underline it. And that word, which is the spoken word, was who? God. God himself. Uh-huh. And the same and the same was in the beginning with God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now, what is in the beginning with what? God. Spoken word. Understand this. What was in the beginning with God? Spoken word. Then where was the spoken word existing? Where do you speak from? inside of you right eh? now that means anything that comes out of you comes inside of you correct then the spoken word was with you so that means the spoken word dwelled in him he made it flesh because he spoke out is that correct is that correct brother read it three said all things we are made by him all things we are made by who the spoken word eh? And remember that the Bible said that spoken word was with him and that spoken word is him. So all things, both heavens and earth, were made by his spoken word. Is that correct? Yes. And God said, let there be. And there was. But this particular spoken word he's talking about is who? Read, read it down. You, and in him was life. And, uh, and the life was the light of men. The life was the light of men. Uh, and the light shone in darkness. Uh, and darkness comprehended it not. not uh, there was a man. There was a man. God. That John, whose name was John, uh-huh. who bear witness about this spoken word. Uh-huh. I want you to know who the spoken word is. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. Who did John bear witness for? Jesus. Is that correct? So, are you saying that Jesus is the spoken word? Wait, 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 wait. read, 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 read. Eight. He was not that light, but uh-huh. was sent to bear witness of that light. That John. That was the true light, uh-huh. which lightened every man that cometh into the world. Uh-huh. He was in the world. He was in the world. In the world. Uh-huh. And the world was made by him. The world was made by him. And the See, word, wait. Wait, 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 wait. The person that made the world came to the world. Is that correct? Yes. Is that what the Bible says? Who was that? Say it. Read, read, read. He was in the world. And he was in the world. And the world was made by him. The world was made by him. And the world knew him not. Hi. And the world, when he came, knew him not. Eleven. Uh-huh. He came unto his own. He came to his own. His own received him not. They flogged him and took him in Baroka. But as many as received him. But as many that received him. To them gave he power. For him, them he gave power. That is where we just read now. Where, where is that? Is that Mark 16, right? Yes. So, who was him that came to the world that was made flesh? That's Jesus. And nothing was made that was made. And he was in the beginning with God. And he was only known as the word of God. Is that correct? And God said, let there be light. That is the word. And light came. So that means the word is God himself. He proceeded and speak the word. The Holy Ghost, the spirit of God came down upon Mary and he conceived why was the principle established that this man must come? Because the principle of divinity, the flesh, the divinity of the spirit lives in heaven. And the principle of flesh lives here what, what? on earth. So for Jesus to come, he needed to come as what? As a flesh. If you come like a spirit, you were coming and something just do. Some of you will take wrong. Now, if the war was with God, and the word was God. That means the spoken word 
became flesh. Is that correct? Now, can you now imagine a man of such capacity who said, let us make man. Let us make man. Now, can't you just see that this man can say, let us make man and people will spring up from where to respond. You know, when you look into the mystery of who God is and when people speak on this thing you call scatology. Okay? Scatology. Scatology. That's why the place we read said, do not be bent by the philosophy of man. If you are being bent with this philosophy of man, the thing will scatologically you. <laughs> Let me me say, oh, now brother say, oh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, is there every possibility that you spoke a word and many want to send an assignment spring forth and he said, who will I send? Now, the question is, if they are teaching you that scatology somewhere, ask them a question. If the question is, who will I send? And he woke up and said, me. Jesus didn't come as a grown through man. Is that correct? He came as a baby who grew in the womb for how many months? So, if there is a scatology, philosophy, explanation, who will I send? You say, ah, prophet, send me. I don't think you need a process to go back as an egg and grow like a spirit, uh, flesh and stay nine months and came out through a woman body. You have grown now. You're supposed to appear. Scatology, physiology. Physical hi, Chineke. <laughs> Which should not mind me. So I won't bite my tongue. I don't know if what I'm saying is very clear. Uh, what you are saying is very clear and it's understandable. Very understandable. This, this uh, particular chapter we just read now used to confuse me. Okay. And uh, it, it means that had he been the whole men of God that uh, maybe are going through the same direction like this, even the Muslim couldn't have been confused because they are very angry when you mention the name Jesus that is a son. They will tell you that Christ, God don't have a son. And that's the reason why they named Jesus Isa in their Quran. Which means they, that name Isa shouldn't have been even mentioned. And I, I think maybe their own eyes should have be more open, open. so that they will reap what we are reaping. Amen. Amen. Can we clap our hands for Jesus here? Let, let me hear more questions. Yes. Hallelujah, amen. amen. My question still go that way. After Jesus was baptized in John 3, verse 17. Who was eh? Is it in John? Matthew. Oh, Matthew 3, verse 17. Uh -huh. Who had that boy that said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, while he was still inside the water? Now, God came and was glorified as a son. So, whenever him too want to talk, he refers to his father. So, at that time, there is every tendency that everybody believes that there is a father and there is a son. When he was living, he left us with a comforter, which is then now known as the what? Of the Holy Ghost. So, at that time, there shouldn't even be an issue of such question arising because everybody believes there is a father in, in heaven. Is that correct? So, his father was talking to him. Remember that the person who was talking to him was equally the person who spoke a word and it manifested to be a flesh. Is that clear to you? If it's not clear, tell me it's not clear. Is it clear? It's clear. Okay. Let me hear you. Before baptism. Before baptism. Apart from knowing God and believing in Him, is there any other thing we should know before we baptize? It's a very good one. Say that question again. Before baptism. Before baptism. And knowing Christ and believing in him. Is there any other thing we should know? There is nothing greater you should know apart from you knowing our Lord Jesus Christ, accepting him as your Lord and personal Savior. When you believe and know him and know the mystery in his name, then you shall be baptized in that name. Then you follow up with your church, Bible class and so many other things. And all that. After baptism, yes. Did all our sin be forgiven? Now, immediately you have believed in him. Now, who is Jesus? A man was sent 
and he died, resurrected again because of our, our what? Now, the man came and died for what? For our what? What was your question again? You have forgotten. After baptism, uh-huh. does all our sin be forgiven? That's what I'm saying. Now, a man came and died for what? He came to save the on, on what? So when you give your life to Christ and become a born again and receive the mansion baptism, the mansion baptism is for your remission of what? Then your sins are hereby forgiven. Yes. Next question. Yeah, that's hands. Okay. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, man. So they are going a little against my wish of uh, not contending with any man of God or his preaching anywhere. I know. What motivated me was your first word and admonition to us that things of God goes with principle. Yes. I so much admit that statement. And um, I'm going to ask of the apostle. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Open it. Open it. 16 verse 15. 16. Acts of Apostle, just give me a minute. That's tells us where Lydia, the woman of God. Acts of Apostle chapter 15. 16. Oh, sorry. 15. I, I want to be there so that I can follow. 16 verse what? 15. 15. When she was baptized. Mm-hmm. My eyes go to that while you were reading a portion of the Bible on Mark 16. He said that's a woman of God called Lydia. And the households we are baptized. If we are going to the meaning of household, it means everybody was baptized. Mm-hmm. There was no separation of who is elderly, who had repentance. And I have to this chronology closer. If somebody is born in a Christian home, maybe as a pastor, a man of God, you Yes. You have a very good son who have known Christ from Cradle. Yes. And he has believed Christ from you, who is the father. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to ask, yes, does sir. that son need bapti- baptism of God again anywhere? Because the essence of baptism is to clean our doubt and our sin. Okay. Can I answer before next question? Let, let me get through down, Pastor, because I wouldn't like to interrupt okay. a man of God. Okay, go ahead. And I heard clearly that the only name we baptize is Jesus Christ because the Father has no name. I'm prompted to ask, <laughs> where do we get the name God from? Now, God means... Man of God, please three me questions. So let I'll me be writing, you, let me be writing it. <laughs> so I won't forget. Where's my Bible? Seriously. Okay, go ahead. I'm, where do we get I'm the name I'm tempted God? to ask, who is God? Why do we get the name God? If it's not the father. And I have tried to search myself. Where did we get that word, God? So I wouldn't like to respond to you. But believing in me, I prayed I won't be a pastor, but I will be a doer of God, <laughs> word of God. Thank you. Okay. okay. Now hear this. Your first question is one. If in the household, maybe let me say you came from a godly house, uh, a family that believes in God, and somebody there has been baptized and all that. Do you need to be baptized? You don't even need to go to scripture. The heavenly principle is not a family matter, it's a personal matter. In fact, on the judgment day, it is clearly that even your wife, the Bible has proclaimed that both of you has become one, will answer one after the other. That's the only mystery you have that Bible has said that both of you have become one. Your father, your mother, and you has not become one. But Bible said you and husband and wife has become one. Upon that proclamation of such institution on the judgment day, if your wife was stealing your money and was not taking permission, they will ask you what they will ask her. They will ask her. So concerning the household, sir, every of your own children, the only thing that can speak on your family is when you talk about covenant and blessings, not concerning the race of the kingdom. I 
can have a covenant now and he speak for my family. But as I'm here, my son must, might be in the market stealing. He will answer that stealing judgment, brother. My preaching as a prophet will not stop him for judgment. So the baptism in that household does not defend your son. But the covenant in your father's house can defend your son. Because anytime God wants to establish covenant, the same way he did with Noah, the same way he did with Abraham, he has always said, I shall bless you and bless your generation. When it comes to race of the kingdom, brother, even your wife, who is known as one, we answer her own. I don't know if that is clear. So is that clear? Should I go to the second one? The second one is where did the name God come from? God is not like a name, like a name. God is like a position of occupants. Like we have President Bugari. He is president, but Bugari has a name. Is that correct? Is that correct? Now, what is the meaning of God? God means you are in charge. Supreme God all over both heavens and on earth. Now, for you to know, this God sent a son. And in, Matthew, uh, in Philippians 2, he made it clear. He said, I have given him a name above every other name. There are dimensions of that name both in heaven and on earth. Every other name. He even said under the earth. Every other name. And that is why when you read from Genesis to Revelation, there is no other name established that demon can bow. From Genesis to Revelation, there is no other name established that you can do miracle apart from believing in that name. He said for those that believe in that name has been empowered to cast out what? That name, that name. So, automatically, it was clear to us that that is a name and that is the name of God. But when Jesus came, he was seen as a son. John chapter, I think, 114 said something. He said he was glorified as a son. Remember that the revelation of his coming came earlier. That a son shall be born. His name shall be called Emmanuel. God. With us. His name shall be called Emmanuel. You see, there was specific his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means that God has come with us. So, God is a being that nothing created, but he created all things. There is, there is to come. And there was, and there still remains. But for him to have come out expressly, give us a name. Acts of Apostles chapter 4, verse 12 says, there is no, read that scripture. He said there is no other name. Read that scripture. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. I think I should be correct. Acts 4 verse 12. Uh -huh. Neither is there salvation in any order. Neither is there salvation in any order. For there is none other name under heaven. There is no other name here. Give in among, America or in Nigeria. In every other world. Given among men. Given among men that we might be what? Safe. We have only one name. So God... Is seen as a, it's just like okay. Let me tell you something. There are many gods. Is that correct? Both big one, small one. Then now, brother, you now came somewhere. There is a shrine somewhere. You reach there, you say, "Hey, all ye shrine, I bind in the name of God." The thing will smile because number one, you might even be referring to him as God. No, be so. You might even be referring something else as God. But when you mention that name that has been given unto man, that every other name, both in heaven, that means if you get to heaven now and mention Jesus, every knee goes down. There is something about that name. This thing is not just a name of the son. There is a mystery behind it. That is why the things of God is more of the revelation and the mysteries. I tell people, what makes you a true preacher of the word of God is not your Bible school. What your Bible school will teach you is doctrine. But what the Holy Ghost will teach you is revelation. Amen. Amen. So I don't know if what I explained is that clear. God bless you. Yes. 
See at the back. Okay. No, they will come to you. Don't worry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I, don't, I never plan to ask that question, but uh, to ask questions. But I want to, I want to support what Daddy has been teaching us since last week. Okay. Because okay. last week he asked me where, I'm, where did I get the question I'm trying to ask. So I was a little bit confused now last week. And uh, during the service now, I was able to find that verse that I'm looking for. By the grace of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want us to open to the first book, the first John. First John. Chapter, chapter 5. First John. First John. Chapter 5. From verse 7. From verse 7. Uh -huh, go ahead. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are And these three are what? Okay. You are giving clearance on my teaching. Is that what it means? I'm giving clearance on your teaching. Okay. I also asked the question last week. That there was a place I read the Bible that talked about three witnesses in heaven. Three. That talked about three that bear record in heaven. Uh -huh. And now I now find it that three two bear record in heaven. But these three, they are one. They are one. They are one. They are one. They are According one. to what you have been trying That's to teach us said. since last week. That the three, they are one that bear witness in heaven. Both the Father, the Word, which is the Son, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Very clearly. That scripture made it clear. And in fact, it's still going on to chapter 8, it says, uh, verse 8. It says, mm -hmm. and there are three that bear witness in heaven. Uh -huh. Earth, this planet we find about. Mm -hmm. The spirit, the, world, the water, the water, and yes. the blood. And, and the blood these is. are still one. Mm -hmm. That is to say that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are, are still one. 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 But the, the only the difference is that they operated they in three offices. offices. That, is yeah. that is clear. That is clear. Let's celebrate our sister for being that brilliant. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Have you been a member of this place? Eh? Eh? Have you been a member of this church? Eh? You was here last week. You was here for the first time. Yeah, Who invited you? My husband is one of your followers online. Online. He watches on our channel. Let's celebrate God. Clap your hands for Jesus. Okay, let's hear your question. Let's hear your question. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. My question goes like this. Uh -huh. From the book of Psalm. Psalm what? Psalm 51. Uh -huh. Where well, your mother conceived in your sins. Uh -huh. Where well, you said, <laughs> uh -huh. yes, you said that children have, they, don't, they, they don't commit sin or they don't count their sin when they baptize them when they are small. So but from this verse, when you said that our mother conceived us in sin. So is it that the sin that our mother commit to conceive what is not a sin or what? Now, that's, that's one scripture. question. That's, 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 okay. okay. And another one. Okay. To refer to what this our brother said. Which that, our brother? Okay. 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 That the same as uh, out of the apostle about that Lydia. About Lydia family. Okay. okay. That he said that. But I believe that the Ethiopia Amok that was baptized, they baptized him in river or ocean, let me say, that's my son baptism. Uh -huh. But yeah, he said that Philip went to there, to her house, uh -huh. and he baptized the whole family. Mm -hmm. So that the whole family, is it that he took them to the river to baptize them or what? Now so listen. I'm confused. There. Now like our brother that spoke earlier, he, he, he brought a language of scatology. The, that word refused to leave my head. Now, the Bible is a foundation of God's spirit talking to us. And the same Philip you're talking about, how to speak to the Ethiopian Enoch. Eh? Now, for Ethiopian Enoch to say to him, according to where we read in the scripture, look at water now, can't we do it? Automatically, you have spoken to him that it must be done in water baptism. Is that correct? The same Philip will not go back. And baptize people without baptizing them in mansion. So if there is no place identified that he took them, but it was identified he was what? Baptized. So the question is, what is baptism? Baptism is to immerse you. So if, just like me now, I wrote a book. And one day, Pastor the visited the house of one brother and so. And after he preached to us, he baptized us. Now, that does not qualify it that he went inside and took water and pour on our head. Is that correct? 
Because if other scriptures has recorded that he took people to mansion and baptize them, will he be preaching to Mount? So he baptized them by mansion. Because the foundation has been established in the Bible. What was the first question? That the Bible said, Psalm 51, have mercy upon me according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of tender mercies. Wash me through from iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my sin and my transgression is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done that which is evil in thy sight. Okay. Uh, uh, the verse, what verse is that? He said, Your mother conceived. Now, what is your question? Your question is. You said that children, they don't. They don't, can't they don't need baptism. Yeah, yeah, they don't need baptism. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Your mother yeah. conceived you. In sin. Who conceived the sin? My mother. So your mother only conceived you in, in sin, sin. Which means as you are now, you're a sinner. Jesus died for you. Now you get pregnant and carry a child. That does not bring the sin to you. To the child, sorry. Not to the child. To the child. Now, if that, that's why the, the Bible said that the kingdom of heaven is likened unto what? Who doesn't know how to bath? Amen, church. So automatically, if God wants to judge them, what will he judge them? He will judge the mother, not the child. Not the child. So, is there any reason of baptizing him when the child does not believe? Is there any child here? Bring a child, bring a child. Bring, bring, bring the baby. Come, come, come. Bring this child. They show the child. No, they show me. All these camera people. Wait. Come, come here. You will give your life to Christ. The child is not responding. You have sinned. Yesterday, you, you went to the hotel and slept with a man. Ah, sister, the, the child is not responding. You don't know what I'm saying. How do I, how even God cannot judge somebody without his sins. What God judges is that which that has committed. I bet what is the offense of this child? I don't know if this answer was clear to you. Sister, are we clear to you? Is it very clear? Okay. okay. Hey. Hey. And all the people who were baptized are those they will preach about Jesus and they will believe and they shall be baptized. Yes, let me hear you. Praise God. Hallelujah, man. So please, there is something I want to ask. Uh -huh. That was what I was taught okay. in my church when I was in the East. Okay. They say the there is age for baptism. Age. This is age. Age for baptism. for baptism. Okay. That is twelve years old. Okay. Okay. But these days, children of nine years, seven years, they've known sin. They've known sin. Must they wait for that twelve years old before they will be baptized? Now, if you baptize a child of seven, eight years, but you're correct, a child of seven, eight years, some of them have known sin. But remember that that sin can easily be changed without even prayer. And that is why the Bible made it clear. He said to the father, bring up a child, father and mother, bring up a child in the way of, if your child is very close to you and you're bringing him up in the way of God, at that age when he's growing up, he will be afraid to take meat in your pot. Now, when he gets to from 12, I think a grown woman then supposed to be seen menstruation, women, is that correct? From 12, correct? Now, that woman can conceive at that age. Is that correct? Is that correct? He has indirectly become a full, a full grown woman. But why sometimes it's not even good to push them to baptism at that age is that sometimes in the, because of African training, that child has not gotten his own freedom from the parents. Hello? He has not gotten freedom from the parents. Now, when you baptize people for the mission of sin, is I committed this and I know it's a sin. It judges my heart. One of the evidence when you be baptized or when you receive a baptism of the Holy Ghost is that if I commit fornication with you, when I get home, 
and something began to judge me. The spirit began to judge me. Holy Ghost began to flog me. I began to hate myself. I began to, that means you are lucky. You see, anybody that has such kind of level, Holy Ghost is interested about you. That means that person has received a baptism of the Holy Ghost. But whenever you commit sin and always feel comfortable on it, ha, Satan is the domain of that body. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. So now, sometimes, little children like that will not even know when their conscience is judging them. Even at that age, they might be doing something and they would think it's right. Amen. So, but you are right when a baby has grown to that level and understand how things work. And let me tell you, I'm not supposed to say this one in the church. When you have received remission of sins, you can equally come short of uh, not glory. Uh, how do I say it? I don't want to use a word that you misinterpret. You can equally come short at the process of living a holy life. In terms of you can fall into one thing or the other that makes you to commit what? That does not mean you should go back and rebaptize them. Hello? That does not mean you should go back and do what? The only thing you need now is now the communication between you. Ah. Yes, sir. I don't try it. Yes, sir.